So I and Joseph were working on open assessments yesterday. Uh, and one of the things that we are doing is refactoring it to use CanCan. -can. Well, in this case, it's CanCanCan -can -can, uh, because that's the currently maintained project. Uh, so just wanted to walk through some of the refactor that we did and some of the benefit that you get by doing that. So uh, currently in the application, we have this controller called assessments controller. Um, it's in the API and this is how you create an assessment. So what we wanted to do um, was one, ensure that the user is actually authorized to create or update a given assessment, uh, and then kind of clean this up. So can, can, can provides really two pieces of functionality to you. One, it lets you authorize a given object, a model, and two, it sets up a bunch of stuff in the controller for you. So the way that it does that is through this load and authorize resource method. So that method is actually a little bit magical uh, and it's important to understand everything that it's doing so that you don't do the exact same thing that it's already doing for you uh, and end up doing things twice. Uh, the first thing it does is it figures out from the name of the controller what resource or what model needs to be loaded or created um, and then authorized. So it knows that we're in the assessments controller, so it's going to, in the index case, it's going to do this for you right here. It will load all of the assessments for you. Um, in the show case, it'll do this piece of it for you. So we could actually refactor this, get rid of that, and it will set up an instance variable called at assessment for you behind the scenes. So you no longer have to go out and create that. And the reason that it does that is it, it has to find that object to be able to verify that the current user has access to that object. And the way that it handles access is through um, an ability class. So um, just creating the file here, just copy and paste in some of this code. So this would be uh, an example of an ability class for can can can. Um, we've modified it to take an account and I'll, I'll show you how to do that in just a second because that's actually important. Usually it just takes a user object and then you can run queries against that user like if you're an administrator you can manage everything. If you are anybody else then maybe you can read everything but then we say you can't read an account. Uh, sometimes it's better to list everything out. So you say cannot read an account, but you can read um, a quiz or whatever. And you can manage a user, but only if the instance of that user, that's what this is right here. Well, sorry, um, that's what this is right here. This is current user being passed in. And then it'll look at the ID on the instance and verify that they match. And in that case, it lets you manage the user. Uh, we had some other options that we decided to add. For example, we have a, an account level. And the account is like a, a subdomain. So the account level uh, object, being an account, has different attributes that restrict user activities. So we have restrict assessment create is one of them. Uh, so if that flag is set to true, then the only way you can create an assessment is if you are an administrator. All right, um, and just really quick, because this is worth noting, if you want to be able to pass other things into this initialize right here, you can do that by going to your, oops, um, we're gonna pretend this is application controller, sorry, I'm just adding code rather than using one of our existing projects. But say this was my application controller, I add a method under private called current ability. And this is what can, can, can will use to create an instance of the ability class right here. And I can say pass it a current user and we also pass it a current account. 
Um, you could pass it other objects as well. So maybe you know, if you're friends with the guy who runs the website, then you can do anything, or whatever. Um, but this little bit of code is really, really useful because frequently you'll find there are other things that you need to pass into the ability class to ensure that you can determine the correct uh, authorizations. So going back to the assessments controller now, uh, all kinds of magic happens with load and authorize resource. Um, so again, we could get rid of this piece of code right here and you say, well, what if I want to add a where clause? Uh, that's fine, you can. I just don't need this part because Rails doesn't actually call the database until you need to get the data. You can continue to add on things like a where clause and a paginate clause. And then down here, when we actually render the JSON, this is where Rails will make the request to the database uh, and get the data back. So that's also kind of handy. All right, so now moving on to the create method. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on here. It's kind of hard to read because there's this huge block of text and you're like, ah, I'm not sure what's going on. And then you read into it and you're like, okay, the, we're only setting the title if it's present and we're going to bring in an assessment from XML and so on and so forth. Um, one of the nice things about can, can, can is that it's going to set up an assessment for us. So at this point, we will already have this object. It'll already be set up. Uh, so we don't have to set title and description and license and keyword list and all of this stuff. We can get rid of it because this guy will have gotten it and already set it up based on um, your parameters. So that then leads us to strong parameters, which are part of RHELS 4, uh, which most of our projects now use RHELS 4. So it will automatically look for um, a, a method called create params. So in the past, for whatever reason, we, we would name this assessment params. All we have to do is rename this to create params. And now when the create method on the controller is called, can, 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 will look for the create params method. It will grab all of these values and it will put them into this object. It will not save it to the database. It will just build the object for you and then let you do other things. Um, so in our case, some of those other things um, involve setting the user because we don't let you set that from the client. Uh, instead, we always set it to the user who is currently logged in, which is current user. So that way the, um, the client can't hack that. Uh, another thing we always set on the assessment is the account. So we can grab the current account and make that a, and set that on the um, assessment as well. Uh, we've got this piece of code going on right here where we were, we were generating an assessment from XML and this does a whole bunch of stuff behind the scenes. So I'm not going to go into the refactor that we did other than to say uh, we changed it so that the assessment has an attribute called XML file that is not saved to the database. And before the assessment is saved, there's a before save filter. It does everything that this from XML does. And maybe we could talk about that in another future uh, discussion, um, just to kind of show how you create parameters on models that are not saved to the database, but then allow you to do some interesting things uh, before the data is saved. All right. So given that we've, we're just going to assume that has been refactored and we're going to throw that away. So that's also very nice. And now right here, we decided that the user should never be able to set the account. So we get to throw that away um, because again, we set it right here. So now I can call assessment.save and I can change that to add assessment. So we've gone from, I don't know, 15 or so lines of code down to four. And this is pretty easy to read and pretty easy to digest. Uh, and we can do the same thing with the update method now. So when you call update, can, can, can will again create, it will set up the at assessment instance variable for you. Uh, it will assign all of the values from 
update params. So you can see we require an assessment and we permit these different attributes right here. So it's going to set all that stuff up for us. Um, we should actually probably remove account ID because we decided we're not going to let the client set the account. Um, that would be a security issue. So again, we can, we could potentially update the user or the account, but I'm, I don't think that we need to. Uh, the initial creation of the assessment should set those things and then leave them forevermore. So really the only thing we have to do is save it. Um, and now we can get rid of all of this stuff. Uh, so let me walk through that just really quickly. This is the part where it was finding the existing assessment. Can, can, can does that for us now. Um, all of these guys right here just set the values on the assessment object. We can get rid of that. Uh, we, re we did this refactor where we moved XML file into the assessment. Again, I'm not going to go into that. Um, this functionality right here was actually duplicated. It also lived inside of the from XML inside of the assessment model, which is a better place for it to live. Uh, it shouldn't have been in the controller in the first place. So now we've moved that into one place inside the model, so we don't have to do it in the controller. We can get rid of this. Um, again, we'll get rid of this because all of the handling of that XML data is done in the model now. Um, and so at the end of the day, our code now looks like this with just two lines. Um, so now our controller has slimmed down dramatically and most of the logic that does the heavy lifting has been moved into the model. Um, and the rest of the logic that actually sets up these objects is handled by can, 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 um, which is really nice. That's boilerplate code. We do it over and over again in controllers. Uh, setting up models so that we can either update them or create them. So there's no reason we should have to hand code that every time. Uh, and that's basically it. Uh, it lets you set up all of your data, get it ready to be saved, ready, and, and you can handle any specific logic here. Um, so if maybe one of the other things I needed to do was account dot you know, verify something, I could do that, or um, maybe it would be like assessment dot, uh, I don't know, security settings or something. Anyway, you can add other methods to the model um, and you can encapsulate that business logic, that, that extra functionality in the model, and then just call a couple of methods here. In our case, we don't need to do that. Um, Everything is happening inside of uh, before save filters in, in the model, so our callback, so we don't have to do that. All right, any questions? I've got a couple comments. Okay. Uh, so can, can, can will read assessment params, so I'm just wondering why you've broken out into create params and update params. Um, that's actually a good question. In this case, we probably didn't need to. Um, in other cases, I've had different parameters, like some of them are available. I've had different create parameters than update params. So at the moment that it was created, you can do these things, but you can never update it afterwards. Uh, so that's just habit. But yeah, we could actually do this, right? And then just get rid of this altogether. And so it'll use the same one on create and on update. Okay. So we probably should refactor and do that. All right. Can you go back to your uh, current ability in the application? This guy? Yeah. Uh, so here's, I'm going to send you a link of what I'm doing right now. You may, you may want to do the same thing as this. I'll link, but a uh, code that I'm doing. And you may want to refactor this so that it does that for you. Oh, okay. So, so if they're not signed in, it will do the regular stuff instead of oops. trying to, I don't know. So you can do this, right? So you just add a little bit of logic into the uh, current ability to say, if the current user is available, then if you use current user dot ability, let's call super. No, so how does that? And I'm not sure how that uh, factors in with 
doing the account stuff, but you know, um, normally that's, how, that's how they recommend you do it. Oh, interesting. I, I found this in their documentation. Um, huh, maybe they've updated it since I last looked. Yeah, so I wasn't sure which one. Like, this appears to be a global method that can, 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 will access. I mean, and it's the same here. Yeah. Um, what I don't know is how this piece is set up. Because in this case right here, where we're just creating a new ability, um, it seems like it's the object stands alone. It's not related to a current user, whereas here, it's coming off of the current user. I'm trying to remember why, why I put it in like that. Why in their documentation they said to do this. And I'm, I know it's for a specific reason, but I can't remember right now. Hmm. Yeah, we need to probably do a little bit more research. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Cool, thanks. Any other questions? I was just looking it up to see if we can. If I can figure out why they would recommend one or the other. Yeah, I'm not, not really finding anything. I'll, I'll look it up and, and I'll let you know. Okay. All right, let me search one more thing here really quick and see. Because uh, it is possible that they've made changes and they recommend one over another now. It, it's hard to know. A lot of this, a lot of my searching takes me right back to the original CanCan, -can, which was updated quite a while ago. Um, as far as I know, everybody's moved over to CanCan -can, can because the original CanCan -can is just no longer maintained. All right. Okay, I'm not finding it. Um, so we'll look it up and maybe we can post some notes if we find anything. But I, I really liked this setup because I can pass anything I want into ability.new. Uh, it just makes it really simple because we've run into this problem a number of times where a user's ability to do something actually depends on either the current account's settings or their relationship to the current account. So if you have a user who maybe has access to multiple accounts, then you have to be able to check that account so you can say, what roles do they have in this account, not what roles do they have generally. All right, any other questions or are we good? All right, thank you much. We'll talk to you guys later.